Hey everybody, it's Ben here and today I want to talk about heat in an electric car. <whistles> Behind me is my Mitsubishi iMeve. Overall, as an all-electric commuter car, it's great. It's a very inexpensive uh, car, great for going to and from work. It works really well for exactly what it's designed for. But does it work in a cold Wisconsin winter? Right now I'm standing in my driveway just in front of my garage and it's two degrees outside, two degrees Fahrenheit. That's just plain cold. One thing that I found with this car is that it has the smallest battery pack of any of the commercially available electric cars and it also doesn't have a very good heater. I've got the hood up and I've got a thermal camera set up. So let's take a look at the car uh, both with regular video and thermal video. Okay, so here is the front of the car and if we look in here, um, this container, trying to get them both on the, the thermal and the uh, visual at the same time, um, that's the coolant container. If you look in the thermal, it's one of the, the, the coolest things under the hood. Uh, again, with the thermal camera, all images are relative, so it's not that the black plastic trim is hot, it's just that it's warmer than the, uh, you know, the, the two degree uh, concrete that the car is sitting on. Uh, but we can see that that coolant container is one of the coldest things in the car right now. Now the car does have a preheat feature that as long as you are hooked up uh, to the J1772 connection, you can run heat from the wall and you can preheat the car. Uh, let's go inside the car. Okay, if we look at the inside of the car now, um, I've got a electric 12 volt heated blanket just laying on the passenger seat. And if you look at the thermal, you can see uh, it's nice and toasty warm. Up on the seats, there's still a little heat because uh, that's where the sun was directly shining uh, through the garage door in the car. But you can see the heated blanket is significantly warmer than even very nice direct sunshine. And if we look down in the footwell of the car, it's still really, really cold. It's two degrees. Uh, so the heated blanket really works very, very well. Uh, kind of like a heated seat, only you can put it up on top, you know, on your lap and over your legs. Another neat feature about almost all electric cars is that they have a preheat feature. And what you can do is as long as your car is plugged into the wall, you can run the heater, draw the power from the wall instead of the battery pack. On a lot of the cars, you set that with a timer, uh, either through the touch controls in the car or maybe on your smartphone. Now, this is kind of a no frills electric car. So in this case, I just have a simple little remote on my keychain. So I'm gonna set that to preheat and then we'll check on the car in about 10 minutes. Okay, it's about 10 minutes later. We're back in the garage. I have the garage door closed so that uh, direct sunlight doesn't throw off our readings. And we can now see that the coolant tank is the hottest thing in the car. And if I put my hand on there, mm, it sort of barely feels warm to the touch. It really only feels uh, warm compared to all the other cold stuff out here. On um, the thermal image, it is showing up as, oh, well, depends where, anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees, depending on uh, where I shoot the thermometer. Uh, and the rest of the hood, there's not a whole lot of heat under there. Everything looks pretty cold, except, let's see, from this angle, uh, we can see the hoses going to and from the overflow. So, um, let's go in the car. Now, I have not uh, opened the door or the window or anything yet, so probably a lot of the heat's going to come right out uh, when I do open the door. But let's take a look at the mirror here. That mirror is hot. We're talking 70 degrees there. Um, I can put my hand on there and, ooh, warm to the touch. That's nice. Uh, heated mirrors. Those mirrors will defrost themselves. Pretty cool feature. Let's take a look inside the car now. We can hear the defroster. It's on. The whole dashboard is nice and warm. Uh, the defroster here, nice and warm. Uh, the 12 volt blanket um, was not on, so it's not too hot. Up a little higher. Higher up in the car is warmer. Lower in the car, not so warm. Oh, hey, this is cool. The heated seat. That's what the heated seat looks like. Um, the 
heated seat comes on with that defroster feature as well. That's pretty cool to see the heat, uh, the, the seat heater element. That's kind of cool. Now, the seat heater, it just has a butt heater. It does not have a back heater. Uh, but if I look down by the feet, darn it, it's cold down there. It's still two degrees down by the feet. Uh, so the defroster is great for the butt heater, uh, de-icing the windshield. Um, the back, the glass on the back should also be all defrosted. That should be warm. Sure enough, we can see the uh, nice warm glass that would get any of the ice or anything off there. Uh, no problem. Uh, the car's really not insulated either, though. Um, uh, basically all the sheet metal is nice and cold. Zero degrees Fahrenheit on the outside of the vehicle. So interesting, you know, the dash, the windows, um, you know, is be de-iced, your butt would be nice and warm, and your feet are still freezing cold, and that is in fact exactly what I found while driving this car. Um, when driving, I could set to heat both the windshield and the feet, but you just don't get much um, uh, circulation of the air. So I gotta say that the preheat feature on this car works really nice. Uh, if the weather is like 30 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the heat system is adequate. It's fine. It works. Uh, it's not fantastic. At zero degrees Fahrenheit and colder, uh, it just doesn't have enough power. Uh, you really have to bundle up, and, and even then my feet have been very uh, cold. So what I plan to do at this point is to install a fuel burning heater. Uh, you might be familiar with these from semi trucks. Uh, drivers who have the sleeper cabs will install these heaters so that instead of idling a huge diesel engine overnight just to get heat, they run this little auxiliary heater and then it runs off the existing diesel fuel tank. Now in this case, I would instead get a gasoline version burning gasoline burning version, uh, not to run gasoline in it, but to run ethanol in it. Uh, right here, this is 70% isopropyl alcohol just from the drugstore. This stuff burns fantastic. That's only 70% alcohol. E85 is 85% alcohol, 15% gasoline. It's cheap and easily available in my area. And then I also have a friend who actually makes his own ethanol from scratch. I can get 98% pure ethanol from him. It does still have to have 2% of other stuff in there just to keep people from drinking it. But alcohol, it's renewable, it's hot, it burns nice and clean. So that's the plan is I'm gonna be getting a, a fuel burning heater and install it in this car. And then that way it's gonna be a hybrid heater. I'll still have my electric heat, I'll still have my electric preheat, but I'll also be able to burn some booze for that nice toasty feeling all winter as well. So I've already ordered the heater, should be here in a couple of weeks. When I get it, I'm gonna install it. I'll shoot some video for you then. And hopefully after that, I'll go for a toasty warm test drive. Till next time, stay charged up and warm.